Let's talk about how to configure your WordPress discussion settings. From your dashboard, go to settings, discussion. The first two settings under default post settings relate to pingbacks. When you link to another website via a post or a comment, WordPress will attempt to send a ping or a notification. If the other website is also built with WordPress, that ping will appear in its comment moderation queue. Disabling the first option will turn off ping notifications from your site. Deselecting option two will block pings from other sites to yours on all future content. There are pros and cons to these features, so it's important to learn about the consequences, which we covered in a blog post. Finally, the last option in this section enables you to turn off WordPress comments altogether. This is great if you don't want to moderate comments, but you also lose out on valuable user engagement opportunities. Now let's move on to the other comment settings. Here you can decide if a user needs to provide their name and email address to leave a comment. To take this a step further, you can require that users register and log in before they can leave comments. Another option available here is whether you want to shut down the comments section after a post has been live for a specific number of days. Cookie opt-ins determine if you want to save users information in their browsers so they can leave comments more efficiently in the future. Nested comments specify whether you want to let users reply to each other's comments and create threads within the post discussion section. This option decides how you would like to organize and display comments once they reach a certain volume. Finally, you can determine the chronological order in which comments will appear. Next up is email me whenever. If you would like an email when someone posts a comment or a comment is held for moderation, you could select that here. WordPress provides a moderation queue, so you could approve new comments before they go live. You could also delete submissions or mark them as spam. The two main options here are to manually approve every single comment that comes in or to only manually approve those from new users. To help with this, you can fine tune what's allowed in your comments section. Here, you can hold comments for moderation if they include more than a set number of links. You could also list specific terms and even IP addresses that should trigger comments to move to the queue. Finally, to take this concept one step further, WordPress includes an option to block specific terms from your comments entirely. If a comment includes any of the terms you list here, it will be automatically moved to the trash so you don't have to waste time moderating it. If a comment includes any of the terms you list here, it will be automatically moved to the trash so you don't even have to waste time moderating it. The last section is all about avatars. By default, WordPress enables avatars for all users who share their thoughts on your website. If they have a Gravatar account, WordPress will try to use that to display a profile photo for a given user. You can choose to disable avatars altogether if you prefer. There's also an option to disable images that may not be suitable for all audiences. Last but not least, WordPress includes an option to set a default avatar for users who don't have Gravatar accounts or maybe haven't set up a profile photo. You can choose from among seven different built-in options, including blank. And there you go. That's all you need to know about your WordPress discussion settings. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content. With that said, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.